Good evening, beloved. Thank you for worshiping with us this evening, this Monday, Thursday, when Jesus, before his crucifixion, gathered with his disciples in the upper room. We want to ask you at this time to prepare for our communion service. If you have a small glass at home, small cup, then fill it with a beverage. Hopefully you may have a little wine or you may have a little grape juice or if you have nothing but water, use that. And for the bread, crumble a loaf of bread, a slice of bread, uh, take a saltine cracker, anything that can be blessed and transformed into the blood and body of Jesus Christ. And now as we look to the Lord in prayer, may we pray together the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples when he taught them to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. King of my life, I crown thee now. Thine shall the glory be. Lest I forget thy thorn crowned brow, lead me to Calvary. Oh, lest I forget. Gethsemane, lest I forget thine agony, lest I forget thy love for me, lead me to Calvary. Show me the tomb where thou wast laid.
Our scripture this evening is coming from the gospel according to Matthew, the 26th chapter and the 25th verse. Then Judas, who betrayed him, answered, Master, is it I? And Jesus responded by saying, Thou hast said. This is the word of God. Amen. Beloved, we are delighted that you would join us for this Monday, Thursday celebration. We call it a celebration because it is the time when Jesus prepares himself to go and meet his cross on Calvary. And during this Corona-19 virus, when most of us are confined to home, when most of us are behind closed doors and we have an opportunity to reflect not only on our families, our children, our significant others, but most importantly, we should take the time to look at ourselves. 
this anxious question put to him most poignantly by the one who betrayed him, Judas. Master, is it I? I want you to look at that question as a part of your daily meditation. Master, is it I? That question reveals, first of all, how little we know about ourselves. As we're confined to home, as we can't travel in groups, as we can't fellowship, and oftentimes hide the nature of our true personality in the context of friends or family, when we must get up every day and hopefully deal with ourselves. And most of us will discover that we don't know ourselves as well as we think we do. We don't know ourselves rather as other people might see us. And beloved, now is the opportunity in the midst of this season while we are here meditating, when we come face to face with who we are. Master, is it I? In the midst of our service, we will say, is it I who have gone into deep places and left others out when I should have been reaching out and bringing others in? Is it I who have carried gossip and false talk about others? Is it I, dear God, who is the one who will betray you with my behavior? I followed you all this time, but yet I know very little about who I am. Take, for instance, Peter. Peter didn't know much about himself. Jesus had to tell him, before the cock crows three times, you're going to deny me. Peter was hot-headed. He thought he had it all under control, but yet he didn't know himself. Know thyself, O oh brother or sister. To thine own self be true. Who are you? And I think in this time, as we participate in this communion, as we consider our own Christian walk, we have to ask the question, Lord, is it I? Secondly, that question, is it I, reveals how little we know about our Lord. Who is Jesus for you? We claim to know him. We claim to walk with him. But yet, we really don't know him like the disciples. They all, Master, surely you don't mean me. You don't mean I. You don't mean that I will betray you. I would never do that. But they revealed every day, beloved, in their walk with God in Christ that they didn't know much about the Savior at all. It was hard for them, and it's hard for many of you to deal with the parable of the prodigal son. The boy left home. He took the fortune that his father gave him, and he wasted it. Why shouldn't the son who stayed at home get the fatted calf and the ring and the robe? That doesn't make sense to me. One person starts work at 9 o'clock in the morning and works all the way through to 5. Another one starts work at four o'clock in the afternoon and works one hour to five, yet Jesus pays them the same wages. Many of us wrestle with that. How is that possible? Jesus said, the last shall be first and the first shall be last. Them that's got shall have, them that's not shall lose. How much do you really know about your Lord? And this is a time when we're confined by this virus for us to sit down and pray with God in Christ, to find out more about Jesus. Let me learn more of his holy will discern. Spirit of God, our teacher be, showing the things of Christ to me. What do you know? Is the world informing you that you would challenge your master? Is the world informing you that you would question God? His ways are not our ways. And he bids us to follow, and we have followed. We said to the world, that we walk with Christ, yet we don't know him. He bent down and he washed his disciples' feet. And he had to chide them and say, you don't know what I've done for you. And they didn't. In the upper room, after they had been with Jesus all those years, they had a fight with who would be greatest in the kingdom of God. They didn't understand the master. And many of us don't understand him today. 
We haven't read enough of his word. We haven't delved into his, his own concept of who he is and who God is. It reveals to us how little we know about our Lord. Thomas said, Lord, we do not know where you are going. And how can we know the way? Question after question after question. After they've been with him all these years, many of you have been in church all these years and you still don't know God. You put the world's ways over God's ways. Because we are fearful in following God. Peter denied him. Judas betrayed him. Thomas doubted him. We don't know our God. And then the last thing, Lord, is it I? That reveals to us on this Monday, Thursday, how well Jesus knows us. Jesus knows all about our sorrows. He will chide till the day is done. There's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. He knows us. He said, he who dips his hand with me in the dish, that one will betray me. He told Peter how many times, huh? He would deny him. Jesus knows all about us. And it's at that communion table when he looks at Judas that grace flies in the face of sin. He knew what Judas would do. But yet and still, he invited him to sit at the table for fellowship and friendship and forgiveness. He knew what Judas would do, yet he embraced him as one of his disciples. He knew what Judas would do, and the same is true with us. It reveals to us this question, how well God knows us. From the soles of our feet to every hair on our head, you can run, but you can't hide. You think you're dodging and weaving, but God hears all you say and sees all you do. So, beloved, when you come to this table in the midst of your confinement, your quarantine, wrestle with God and wrestle with yourself. The late Michael Jackson would sing, look at the person in the mirror. Who do you think you're fooling? Me, perhaps. Who do I think I'm fooling? You, perhaps. But neither one of us is fooling God. And sometimes, beloved, when we don't even know it, others can see our hypocrisy. I claim to be no better than you than this. I claim no hierarchy in the house of God. But I do say to you that during this communion service, as we watch as the precious Lamb of God is prepared for that awesome sacrifice on Calvary. Let us take this opportunity to look at ourselves, to prepare ourselves, because as the people of Abyssinia know, it's going to get worse before it gets better. And we must be ready to face the challenge. Jesus was ready. He didn't want to, but he had prepared himself in prayer while his disciples slept. Jesus was ready, though he didn't want to go, but he had prepared himself as the Passover lamb of God. And so, dearly beloved, take advantage of this time. Immerse yourself in the word. Strengthen yourself for the days to come. Master, is it I? And remember, thou hast said. Our scripture for our communion service is found in the Gospel of Matthew, the 26th chapter, and we begin at the 17th verse. And now on the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the disciples came to Jesus, asking of him a question, Master, where wilt thou that we prepare for thee to eat the Passover? And he said unto them, Go into the city to such a man, and say unto him that the Master saith, my time is at hand. 
I will keep the Passover at thy house with my disciples. And the disciples did as Jesus had appointed them, and they made ready the Passover. And now when the evening was come, he sat down with the twelve. Now is the time for witnessing, beloved. You may be home with your children. They may never have seen you witness or give praise to God. They've never seen you with tears in your eyes saying, thank you, Jesus, not only for saving me, but for helping to deliver my family. And so as Jesus sat down with the 12, you sit down with Jesus. And we're going to ask, is there a word for the Lord? Now is the time for you to witness. You can use a Bible verse. You can use the line from a hymn. In your own home, with your own family, gathered around you. Sister, with your children there. Brother, with your children there. Grandmother, grandfather, aunts, uncles, gather now. Call them from watching TV in some other room. Call them together and witness for the Lord. Are there any words for Jesus? My witness is this, one thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord, and to inquire in his temple. I've been at Abyssinian Church now 48 years, a desire to roam, perhaps. But dearly beloved, my commitment is to the house of God. I'm one of the biggest sinners in the world. But the Lord called me. And my pledge and my faith is with the Lord. One thing have I desired, that will I seek after. That I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. As they were eating, Jesus took bread and he blessed it. He took the cup and he blessed it. And he said unto them, one of you is going to betray me. They became exceeding sorrowful and began every one of them to say unto him, Lord, is it I? Jesus said, the one who puts his hand with mine in the dish, the same shall betray me. The Son of Man goes as it is written of him, but woe unto that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. Then Judas, who betrayed him, answered and said, Master, is it I? Jesus looked at him and responded, Thou hast said. Now take the hands of your family members, of your significant other, your partner, your husband, your wife. Take them by the hand. If you've got a large gathering, get in a circle. Let's everyone bow our heads for just a moment of prayer. Let's go to the throne of grace. Dear God, hear our prayer. Incline thine ear to us. Have mercy, O God. Strengthen us and help us to know ourselves. Help us to know that we have a short fuse, a raging temper. Help us in the midst of this confinement to see our own violent acts. We've hurt our husband, we've hurt our wife, we've hurt our children. Have mercy tonight, oh God. I'm crying out for deliverance. Help me now in this hour. Help me at your table. Do, oh God, a miracle in my life and change me. Lord, is it I? Am I the one who has disturbed the household? Am I the one who has refused to listen to your word? Am I the one who puts on a show, yet deep down inside, I yearn to know more about Christ? So have mercy today, O oh God. Master, 
is it I? Remember thou hast said. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. As they were eating, Jesus took bread. He blessed it and he broke it and he gave it to his disciples and he said, take, eat, for this is my body. Now, beloved, at the beginning of the service, I told you just you don't have a wafer like this one. Just crumble up a slice of bread and take a piece of it. We're going to ask the Reverend Tong Young to come and bless the bread. And beloved, whether you have bread, wheat bread, white bread, corn bread, it doesn't matter. God has power to transform any kind of bread, this wafer, into the body of Christ. So now, as Reverend Young comes, let us look to God in prayer. Let us pray. Gracious and eternal God, on this solemn evening where we fellowship together for this Monday, Thursday service, God, as we sit at this table, we are called to be reminded of our own frailty as human beings. And God, as we reflect upon our condition, the condition of our bodies, the conditions of this world, and the conditions of our hearts, we find that there are many broken places that we need you to fill. So God, as we break of this bread, we ask that you would give us life, for you are the bread of life. And we ask that you would feed us until we want no more. And God, as yeast has caused this bread that we will partake in to rise, we know that in just a few days, you too shall rise again. So God, we ask that you would rise up and give us hope, that you would rise up and bring us peace, that you would rise up and soothe our anxieties in the midst of this quarantine. And God, we also ask that you would rise up and bring comfort to those families who are bereaved. Oh God, right now we call the name of Brother Winton Marcellus and the loss of his father, Ellis Marcellus. We call the name of Sister Karen Phillips and the loss of her father. We call the name of Trustee Ernest Myrick and the loss of his mother. And we lift up the name of Sister Nadine Johnson, who's lost her husband. And God, we also ask that you would bring comfort and peace to those who are sick and shut in. So God, in this moment, we call the names of our deacons, deacons Jarrell and Eliza Johnson. We call the name of deacons Olga and Larry Dayas. Oh God, we call the names of deacon, uh, deacons Jerome and Yvonne Jennings Tobert. We ask that you would hear our prayers, oh God. We ask that you would, with this bread, your body, feed us. Give us uh, sustenance that will feed our souls, oh God. And again, oh God, we ask that you would be that eternal bread of life and feed our souls and spirits until we want no more. So God, in this moment, I ask that you would transform this uh, element from its secular use to its spiritual purpose so that upon our partaking of it, we may have life, we may have wholeness, and we may experience divine reconciliation unto you. This is our prayer. In the matchless and in the mighty name of Jesus, we all say amen. This is the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ broken for you. Eat ye all of it. Thank you, Lord. And he took the cup and he gave thanks and he gave it to them saying, drink ye all of it, 
For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for the many for the remission of sin. But I say unto you that I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. We're now going to call on the Reverend Reginald Lee Bacchus to ask God's blessing upon the cup. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for your blood. We thank you that there's power in your blood. We know that this sacred moment did not begin just in the New Testament, but even in the Old Testament, O oh God, at the time of the Exodus, when pestilence was sweeping and ravaging the land. And you sent word through the prophet, through your servant Moses, that all those whose homes, the doorposts, the entrance of their abodes, if it was covered in the blood, they would be spared. So we thank you now that there is still covering power in the blood. We know that the blood did not come easy, O oh God, but by the stripes, the nails in his hands and the rivets in his feet, the crown of thorns on his brow. So we thank you that there is power in the blood. We recognize it was not Martin's blood, not Malcolm's blood, not Medgar's blood, not Mandela's blood, not Fannie Lou Hamer's blood, not Ella Baker's blood, but simply the blood of Jesus it has cleansed us and washed us to give us hope eternal. So we call on the power that is in that blood now. We plead the blood of Jesus for our beloved members, Philip Smith, Brother Philip Smith. We remember Ernestine Stroud, and Dr. Bert Peterson and passing of his mother. We remember Deborah Jones, and Tom Stevens, and Dr. Marcella Maxwell, and pray for her daughter and son-in-law. We thank you now, God, that even still there is power in the blood. So transform now the contents of this cup from its natural and secular purpose to its supernatural and spiritual purpose. We shall give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. It's in that mighty name of Jesus we do pray and say, Amen. And he took the cup, and he gave thanks, and he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it, for this is my blood of the New Testament, shed for the many, for the remission of sin. Drink ye all of it. Amen. Dearly beloved, we implore you, we beg of you, to use these days as a closet of prayer, to lay your soul bare before God, and to incorporate into your spiritual life the prayers and the meaning of this Monday, Thursday service. All praise to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you for being with us this evening, beloved. We want you to continue to worship with us through the Holy Week. Tomorrow at 11 a.m., we will worship the Lord on Good Friday with Mother African Methodist Episcopal Zion Church, the mother church of the AME Zion denomination. Their pastor, the Reverend Malcolm, Reverend Dr. Malcolm Bird, will be here with us, and we invite you to join in. And now we invite you to contribute to support the ministries of our churches and especially the Abyssinian Baptist Church. You'll see on your screen a Contribute Now button. 
And as we play one of the archive selections of our great choir, we ask you to give. If you press that button, you'll see instructions on how to give. And we thank you for all that you will contribute to support the ministries. Thank you for being with us. And now please enjoy the archive selection and use the Contribute Now button to give to the church. For those of you who may not have in the past, let me recommend text to give. That's a good, easy way to support the ministry of Jesus Christ at the Abyssinian Baptist Church. Amen. Yeah. 
Now may the power of God, the love of Christ Jesus, and the communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with us all now, henceforth, and forevermore, world without end. Amen.